Right, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Gloves Off with Deshi Bacta. Today, the man they called Legs of Thunder. Yeah, Jerry Scosana, former Pirates player, uh, spent some time at Whitbank as well, and basically grew up as a footballer. Scored some 47 goals at his time at Pirates. Jerry, welcome. It's good to see you. You look really well. Um, what exactly are you up to these days? Thanks for having me, Deshi. Uh, just roaming around, you know, looking for something that you can do as a footballer. But obviously the passion is maybe coaching. You know, as you know, lately, the rate of scoring goals has dropped. And we, we just around here not being utilized, yeah. That's the what, sad part. What do you think the problem is for that? I think it's the, it's, the, it's the passion that is not getting to the current crop of players, you know, the, the way how you need to score goals, you know, because it needs to come within you. There's no remedy of telling somebody, especially a striker, how to score goals. But with the passion within you inside, this is what I think these young lads are, are missing lately, and it's something which needs to be to be reminded to them, especially people like ourselves. Take us back, Jerry, to where you started, where that passion came from. Well, Deshi, uh, myself, I never started as a striker. When I grew up in Tembisa, I started playing as a goalkeeper. <laughs> people will laugh about that. Yes, I started as a goalkeeper. But unfortunately, you know, when we play as youngsters, there was a time when I was like uh, kicked in the stomach and you know I was like bleeding you know went to hospital and I had like stitches only to find that I had um, I've swallowed something like a, a, a wire you know to my appendix and then they had to cut me again you know to remove that wire and it it it, it showed when I went for the x-ray after I was kicked as a goalkeeper trying to save and one of the guys when we were still young kicked me and that's why I stopped like a, a, being a goalkeeper even at school in my grade uh, we used to call it standards you know yes. my standard <laughs> my standard a uh, 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 three you know which is like grade one now you know I, I, I was a goalkeeper at school and a good goalkeeper because my late uncle was a goalkeeper for one of the clubs that was like based at, uh, in Tembisa. So that's how I had the passion of playing the game, but changed a, into an infield player as a naughty player on the side because I was now having a problem with my injury, you know. So now I would sneak in, play on the side, a little bit of that. You know, when they pass, I just score a goal on the angle. And I think that's where it grew up and yeah. From there on, it was just that as a striker. What about your first professional club, Jim? Well, I was lucky enough because when I was still at school doing my grade 12, which was like standard 10 then, uh, I had the privilege of having Fanny Madida to come and upgrade his standards because he passed, but the, the marks were not good enough for him to have a, a, a varsity entrance. So he came to our school to upgrade, I think it was like a six month spell, you know, just to come to upgrade and I made funny. And because I was playing good football, scoring goals, and he just invited me because he was with Chiefs, but loaned to Blackpool. And that's where it all started, you know, going with funny to training and the late Eddie Lewis and also the late Sandy Lebali noticed that I was good enough as a youngster. And they signed me on and yeah, I think that was like 1988. You know, when they were still campaigning in the den, okay, like, you must have known it better, yeah. Deshi. Okay. I do, I, yeah. uh, I won't forget that team. It was a really good team. Yeah. Masango, Juri Bantwana. The late Shuz Mishweu, Juri Bantwana, yeah. Andrew Ramsden, Harold Ellis, Neil Van Royen, John Muloy, you, you name them, you know. Yeah. It, it, it was a good team. In fact, if I remember correctly, that team beat Chiefs and Pirates. Beat Chiefs, Pirates, uh, Swilos 4. Beat Chiefs 4-1, beat Pirates 4-0, beat Swilos 4-2. Yeah, no, I know, that was a great, <laughs> great 
right no, side. We, yeah. yeah, but I was still like an understudy to the three mosquitoes, eh? Gilboy yeah. Masang, Fani Madida, and uh, the late Shoes Mashweu. So I was still an understudy, but I learned a lot from those three. Yeah, I've got to tell you, to be an understudy to pl uh, players of that sort of quality is nothing to be ashamed of. And then, Jerry, from that, uh, you moved to Whitbank. Yes, I moved to Whitbank, and it was after uh, Giant Blackpool, you know, was sold to the great guys, Phil, and it changed to Sharp Highlands Park. It was no longer a, a, a Giant Blackpool. It used to be Giant Blackpool, it went to Sharp Blackpool, but it changed to Sharp Highlands Park when uh, the late, uh, 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 our, our previous owner, Colored Pasmo, sold it to, to, to the great guys. But yeah, it was also sold to a tycoon in Velcom, a mining magnate, you know, and it changed now to, uh, I think it was, it was another name, you know. I was there for only a month, but because of schooling, and they were training in Velcom, Velcom Eagles. That was Velcom Eagles from Sharp Highlands Park to Velcom Eagles. So we came this side to play Aces in Guandebele, Kwamshanga. And I had fellow, like, like colleagues that were playing for Aces, staying together in the Tembisa, Paige Mathangu, Joannis Shili, uh, Kevin um, uh, 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 Bafana Sibeko. So those were the guys that we were more close, you know, in the East End. And yeah, after the game, we spoke and I told them it was difficult for me to travel whilst I was still at school. And they spoke to Veli Matlangu and yeah, he came to me and then we agreed and they agreed with Velko Mikkels and that's how I joined a, a, a Whitbank Aces. Now your time at Pirates was really what gave you the exposure, showed people exactly what you're about. But the funny part about it, before I went to Pirates, you know, I, I think I, there was a time we played in uh, Linville, a uh, Whitbank, and I scored a goal where uh, 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 Willie Okpara couldn't believe, you know. I hit him on the side and he tried, he thought the ball was over the bar, only to find that the way I hit the ball with power, it just got underneath the net and it stayed on top, inside the net. And he went around the pole, going to get the ball behind, and he noticed the ball was inside and they were celebrating. And also, that was the day when I spoke to the late uh, uh, Lawrence Ngubane after the game. And then he said, where do I stay? I said, I stay in Tembisa. And Orlando Pirates were using McLaren Stadium in Tembisa. And it was like convenient for me, you know, to go and watch them train there or maybe prepare for games. But uh, 95, January, not knowing anything, ready to go to training with Whitbank Aces, comes somebody that was sent by pirates to come fetch me from home. And I didn't know anything that uh, pirates and Aces have come to an agreement for me to move to pirates. I was ready to go to Aces training and the pirates people came home and then they said, no, we're here to pick you up. You are now a pirates player without signing any papers. Now I had to go. Because obviously that was like a great move, you know, from ACs, a small club, to Pirates. I didn't hesitate. And yeah, also, you know, from whatever amount that I was getting at ACs to what I was going to be getting at Pirates. It was great for me to join Pirates, but that's how I joined Pirates. I didn't know I was a Pirate player until I went to the offices to sign with the chairman himself. And yeah, anyway, the rest is history. It's very strange how it worked in those days compared to how it works today. But you say 95. 95. 95 was an important year in Pirates' history. Definitely it was, Deshi. But uh, remember when I got there, they already had players registered for the first round of the CAF Champions League. And I wasn't eligible to play, you know, until a certain stage where they would be able to add a, a, a new players. And I was one of those players that was added after they qualified for the uh, quarterfinals. So I happened to start playing in the quarterfinals and it was like a good journey because when they used to go and play like uh, uh, Swaziland, I would be part of the team but just to go and watch, just to know how it, 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 it worked, you know, going uh, like different country around Africa 
And I was roped in as somebody who would understand and gel with the rest of the players that were campaigning, even though I wasn't playing. So it was, it was easy for me when I joined them in the quarterfinal to have just a free flow and the understanding in terms of how you're supposed to approach a, a, a Africa when we venture into the CAF Champions League. Leading to the final, what was the feeling like in the camp? It was a great feeling, Teshi. Uh, my quarterfinal game, we went to, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Gabon. We drew 1-1, we came back, we beat the, that, uh, the Gabon team 3-0 at the FNB. Semi-final, we went to Uganda. We also drew in Uganda and beat that team 3-1 at the FNB. And now came the final, which was Asik Mimosa. Remember Asik Mimosa in the semi-final, they drew with Al-Akhli uh, of, of Egypt, in Egypt, you know. They, in fact, they, they, sorry, they lost 4-1 in Egypt. And they came back in Abidjan and beat Al-Akhli 5-0 to have a 5-5 aggregate. And they progressed in terms of away goal rule because they scored one goal away. So it, 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 it was like we were in for it. We were playing a team that play, a, a beat the defending champions in, in Al-Akhl of Egypt. And we, lucky enough, drew with them at FNB. That was our slaughterhouse, but we threw with them. And whoa. after the game, you know, the supporters were telling us how doomed we are, especially the Ivory Coast supporters, because we were not going to have a chance in, in, in uh, Ivory Coast. So it was hardly a week before we could go to Ivory Coast for the return leg, which was like the second leg. And for me, it was a sad story, Deshe, because if I have to put it to you now, I never wanted to go to Ivory Coast for the return leg. The reason being, I was, because I scored in all the games prior to the final at the FNP Stadium, I couldn't score in the final, first leg. And I was told I was greedy, I was selfish, I made Pirates true. Uh, I was the worst player on the day, and that didn't sit well with me because it was on radio. Came Monday, I never went to training. Our coach was the late Joe Frickleton. I never went to training. On a Tuesday, Joe Frickleton was sacked. You know, it was now the late Mkanda as an assistant coach. I never went to training because I was close to Joe Frickleton. And Augusto Palacios came to Tembisa looking for me at my home. Still, I never wanted to, to meet him. And the chairman himself came home, you know, just to make sure what was the problem. And then telephonically, because I told my mom, don't tell them where I am, because I don't want to go there. I don't want to play for Pirates anymore, because I was angry. The way I was like, I, I told I made the team true, and if the team lose in Ivory Coast, it would be my fault. And that didn't sit well with me. But lucky enough, with, the help of my mom, she convinced me. On a Wednesday, I just went straight to the airport to join the rest of the team. And I find them inside the plane because I was late. I delayed the plane. I never wanted to go to, to Ivory Coast. And I got into the plane late. Ivan Koza was there. Everybody was there. And, you know, the players did understand my concerns because we would talk over the phone and tell them what was my problem, not attending training. And lucky enough, I had to travel with the team. But I was still like having that problem, you know, I was not okay until Ivan sat with me at the hotel in Ivory Coast and told me like, we're here to play, we're all together, nobody's at fault, we need to be together, we need to be united. And one thing that I would tell you now, that was the first time I would see the Iron Duke himself coming to training to watch us train with the late uh, 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 Ronald Mkandawere. And it was like a positive thing. And yeah, came Saturday, came that moment, came that goal. We lifted the cup and I was the hero. But the people that were with me in that team, they knew that was not going to be possible if there was no persuasion of me joining the team, going to Ivory Coast. So that's the story, which a lot of people don't know about it. It's an inside thing, which the chairman knows, the players knows, the captain of the day, which was Eddie Mutale, they all know about this story. So I think, yeah, it's something which I'm putting it to you. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know you made me to be who I am today. When I was still young, I tried to score you. I never scored one, but yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Jerry, I think everybody scored through me. <laughs> but who was the person that criticized you during the first leg? I think they support us. The Pirates support us because they were used in me scoring goals, as I said it earlier on, because I never scored. But funny enough, I created the, the first goal that Hellman scored, Hellman M. Kalele. I created a, 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 like a, a finishing pass. I also created the corner kick that was taken by Brendan Silent for Kevin Lane to head, to, to take a header and make it like 2-2 two -two as, as an equalizer. I forced that corner. But I was like, because I didn't score, then I was the bad player in the Pirates' uh, 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 supporters, you know, and that didn't sit well with me. Well, sometimes supporters are known to be really very fickle. <laughs> they will really get into your yes. nerves. But, uh, Jerry, when you look at our football now, I mean, there's just so much going, uh, so much money in our game. But what is the problem with the standard? You spoke earlier about strikers, for instance. But the rest of it, are you happy with it? Definitely, I'm not happy, Deshi, with the standard of play lately. But now, remember, when we start voicing our, our concerns as ex-professionals, you know, the current crop of players would come and say, just because you were not paid enough as much as we're getting now. Remember, the corporate industry is huge in football now. There are a lot of business people, uh, business companies that are pledging their money into football compared to our days, you know. As it was more of the passion, of which is something that is lacking now. If maybe the players can just shift their focus on the money part of it, how much they're earning, how much they're signing on fee, you know, I don't want to get hurt, uh, uh, I need to look after myself. I think that's the, 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 the difference compared to us before, because for me to play this game, I would get stuck in, I would fight defenders, I would be aggressive, because I know that was what was getting paid to me. Whatever that I was getting from hand to mouth was enough for me to show that, 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 that passion within me, you know, to show that football was like my living. Yes, it wasn't enough, but I think it was within us, you know, to show the people that we're paying their hard earned money that we're playing this football for them to enjoy. Not like now where, you know, a lot of players, it's all about I want to drive a, a Range Rover Lumina, you know, a three million car, because he's not stuck in, he's looking after himself, injuries, you know, it's, it's all about players being scared this year. I think that's the difference between us and the players, because before us, you look at, for me, I, I, I used to look up after uh, uh, Tonado Nsibande. I used to look after Metro Blit Setole. I used to look after uh, 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 Calvin Peterson. You know, those are the people that, oh, as a striker, this is what uh, 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 Mike Mangena would do. You know, that bulky thing, that aggressive, aggression. It, 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 it it went into my blood, you know, watching them do that. And I wanted to do better than them. And that's what made me to be who I am. Unfortunately, I don't know if there is anybody who says, I want to be like Jerry. I want to get aggressive. I want to be a, 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 a menace to the defenders. You know, Jerry used to go hard. Jerry used to talk. All of that. I don't know if there is any. But if there is any, there is still a long way before they could emulate what we used to do. Yeah, you mentioned Mike Mangena. I remember oh, he was always very aggressive. Aggressive, you know. Uh, had a strict look on his face. He, he was always serious, Deshi. Yeah. You know, you watch Mike, even if he goes for the header, yeah. you could tell he was going there. He didn't, like, like take any prisoners. You know, if the yeah. defender comes, he was going to call it. And this is also what I used to do. I mean, we go 50-50 with the defender, I would get stuck in. Because I knew if I shy out, I'm the one who's going to be injured. So I need to get stuck in. And it grew with me. And also watching a lot of English soccer, you know, you look at the guys like Paul Gascoigne and the cat in there. You look at the uh, 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 Andy Cole, um, uh, 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 Teddy Sheringham. Those are people that I used to also watch overseas, you know. 
you go and like you used to watch Ronaldo, you would run everywhere and it's in, in, also inspired me to say, look, I want to run for each and every ball that is kicked forward. Anybody is doing that lately? No. Everybody wants the ball to be playing his feet. I think also the training method has dropped a little bit. Yes, there is a lot of technology, but you still have to have that old method of hard training, hard running, twice a day. And yeah, I think it, it helped a lot. Now, you've just touched on some in there, and I've heard lots of criticism. I've heard lots of messages with regard to uh, the coaching, particularly the junior standards of coaching. Then there's some that also say that too many of the same coaches have stayed in our game for too long. What is your feeling? Well, DG, to me, it's more like a flip of the coin. Because sometimes you can get it right by saying you want to have a head and you just flip the coin, it stays as a head, you are a winner. Sometimes as a coach, you just want a head and then you flip the coin, it comes as a tail and then obviously it's a flop. So for me, it's all about how do you conduct yourself in terms of what you want from players, but also the respond needs to come from the players in, in, in your philosophy. Okay, and when you look at the club owners, there's a lot of club owners that have come on board, but is it for the right reasons? I think it depends, Deshi. You've got club owners that come for the right reasons, but a lot of club owners, you know, go into football as business, not as a, as, 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 as a passion. You know, they just want to generate something out of football and it's a negative approach. For me, I would love to have all the club owners, you know, having the mentality. For instance, if you take Manto Madlala of uh, Golden Arrows, you know, and you look at that and also a, 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 a Tidiela of uh, Black Leopards, those are people that are passionate and they've been working hard with uh, a, a clubs and they've worked also with PSL before. Okay, so there's club owners, there's also club owners. Would you believe that I have been involved for too long? Yes, there is. There is like uh, those that have been involved for too long. But contrary to that, if you look, for instance, Kaiser Mutong, uh, he's been with Kaiser Chiefs since the beginning, and the club is still like they regard it as the glory team. And yes, of course, maybe Dr. Ivan Koza, not hands on with Orlando Pirates, but you look way back when he started to land with Orlando Pirates as a security personnel, you know, for him to get into the Pirates stuff and Pirates are still the mighty uh, 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 Buccaneers. Unfortunately for clubs like Swallows, uh, with Bank Aces, uh, 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 pushbacks, you know, the, those clubs that fell on the side, Devon City, you look at those teams, uh, 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 African Wanderers, those are the teams that you had club owners that were passionate, but unfortunately, those teams have to co had to collapse along the way. But yeah, certainly, let's look at so, certainly. That, yeah, at that time, I don't believe there was in, enough money, or as much money as there is in the game now. Today, yes, yeah. definitely. I mean, obviously, people come and bring money because of, 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 of their status, you know. Some other people, they are millionaires. They want to venture into, into, into football. And sometimes you've got club owners. Uh, for instance, if you look at Free State Stars, Mr. Mokwena, you know, Yoyo -Yo Team, sorry to say that, but that's true. Jomo Sone himself, Jomo Cosmos, also Yoyo -Yo Team. Those are people that are passionate, but unfortunately, it doesn't work their way. Only people that brings and generates a lot of money. Let's take a look at Mamelodi Sundowns. Firstly, before Sundowns got to be the Sundowns that we all knew about, because I never knew anything about Sundowns before Zola Mahobe came on board. And after Zola Mahobe, the Croc family came on board with a lot of money. And after the Croc family came Mr. Motsepe with a lot of money. And to look at where Sundowns are today, yes, a lot of money being generated into that club, but also it kills, you know, the standard of football, because if you look at how many players in this generation of Mr. Mutsipe that were sold and they had to be put outside again, you know? It, it, it becomes like a one-sided business football 
minded, you know, because with money you can buy anybody from pirates, chiefs, but if they're not good enough, and then you discard them. And then those players were good enough for AX, Cape Town, you know, uh, uh, Cape Town City, for instance, like, yeah, I think money has taken over. Let me put it like that. Money has taken over football. I think it has. Uh... But I think it's happened all over the world, quite honestly. But Jerry, I've got to ask you, um, your Chinese experience. You spent some time in Guangzhou. Um, you did really well there. Um, do you have regrets about that time? Definitely, Tishni, I have regrets about my move in China because I thought it was better because the offer that was given to me by the club in China was good enough and it was something that I know it would take my family somewhere. It was far much better than what I was earning at Orlando Pirates. I think it was five times better than the salary that I was getting at Orlando Pirates. So for me to venture into Asia was not a problem if you I need to go there and work for my family. But the sad part about it was like I was doing well in China, I was scoring goals. Other clubs were even a, a, a prepared to give an offer to the team that I was playing for, you know, because I was scoring goals, playing good football. And unfortunately, there was like the signing on fee that was like pending, of which the club in China, when I asked them in China, they said, no, we've paid everything to Orlando Pirates. The only thing that we owe you is the salary every month that we agreed between ourselves and you as a player. But the rest of the signing on fee, the patches of you coming here, everything was done with Pirates. I don't know, because then there was no agent that I was like signed with. I was just an ordinary player. You know, you, you, you remember we didn't have agents, but yeah, I had to come back because of that problem. Do you have regrets about that? I really do, I really do. I missed a lot because when I came back, I came to Amazulu, they didn't do well, they got relegated when the late Eddie Lewis was trying to save them. And also coming back to Pirates, you know, it wasn't the same. It was difficult because there were a lot of players who came in when I was not around. And I went to, to Tembisa, which was Tembisa Classic. I never even spent two months. And yeah, I think that's where it just fell through. Jerry? You've given us just so much insight, but I've got to ask you this. Right now, what are you doing? What are you hoping to do? Are you doing anything at all? Presently, there's nothing that I'm doing, just being a brand ambassador of Hollywood Pets, and yep, it's something which is, 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 is putting me to move along with the family. I'm looking forward to maybe getting the chance to coach, I used to be like a commentator, like a, 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 like a soccer analyst at Supersport. You know, politics are a problem in South Africa. I was stopped doing that. And yeah, I wish maybe for the future. I, I can't tell, Deji. I can't tell really because I thought I was doing well there. Eh? You know, my analysis of the game, my understanding of the game was good enough. But yeah, unfortunately, it has to stop. And I'm looking forward maybe to getting a job and be a coach in the near future. Do you feel discarded by the entire South African football industry? I really feel discarded by the entire football industry because we've offered a lot and we still walk in the streets or malls. We regard it as the legends that can plow back our experience, but unfortunately we're not given the chance to do so. Right, Jerry Skosana, Legs of Thunder, hopefully Somebody out there will be watching this. And who knows, there may be a coaching job around the corner. I sincerely hope for a man who's achieved so much, given us so much pleasure over such a long period of time, it's very, very sad that he sits in this position today.